Uh, we will talk about support vector uh, machines or support vector uh, networks, uh, SVM or SVN. The first time this was introduced, they were calling them support vector network. And as we end, I have put the paper which uh, have been published by Vatnik, uh, Valdemir Vatnik, the person who introduced uh, SVM for the first time. And you see that in that paper they have mentioned SVM, but it's, it's the same strategy. Um, this is kind of the newest um, technique that we have for classifier. It was introduced about 50 years ago in, in Valdemir Vatnik's PhD work. Uh, which he did in, in Moscow University, but um, it was not welcomed. I mean, it was like, this is finished. Till in almost the end of 90s, when he was working in Bell's lab, uh, so he, he immigrated to the US, and uh, he was having um, a coffee or, I don't know, a meal with, with a friend, and they were working in Bell labs uh, on character recognition, handwriting character recognition. And they were using a neural network. Uh, we know a neural network is cool, but it's pretty slow, and sometimes it really doesn't give us very good results. So uh, while the they were talking, uh, this partner said that, hey, I have this my, my method, and I'm, I bet you that it works very well. And over the friendly bet, it worked very well. And it became one of the strongest um, classifier techniques. And after that, the guy who proposed that one, like after 30 years of being no one, suddenly became a huge person. He's still alive, should be about 80 years old, I guess. But if, if you love, we can send him an email before he dies, so they can reply back. Uh, but this is, uh, and this is pretty cool to, to see these people alive. I have not seen him, but I think it's good to see he's still alive. So we will talk about SVM. Um, very uh, strong tool. We will try, or I will try to talk about the basic, how it came, we came up with the idea of SVN. And uh, uh, I will try to show as less mathematics, or basic algebra as it is possible, because you understand that we are talking about vectors. Um, in the module right now, you can see the paper that Wapnik has written. It has all the proof. You can see one YouTube link. Uh, of a guy from uh, from uh, MIT who has who, who has shown and read and wrote the formulas. So if you want to, because I will tell you the conclusions mainly that I'm talking. But if you want to see how the, the derivatives has been arrived, you can go and watch that 40 minutes video. It's it's pretty straightforward. It's not very complicated, but it will be out of the scope to for me to, to teach it to you. So. Uh, till now, we have talked about dividing the space into different, well, let's call it sections or classes. There are many methods which can be used, such as neural network. We know that um, people who work on deep learning they are using this uh, CNN, convolutional, uh, convolutional neural network. Uh, it's, it's very strong. But if you use it, you see that you may need about, let's say for, for big data, you may need one week to train and then test, so it's pretty slow. If you want to learn a lot about this one, there is a course in um, computer science, machine learning algorithm, which they talk about in our network, you can go and, and, and take it. Um, and, and the trees, etc. Today we will learn a simple yet 
sophisticated technique, which is developed for classification. Now, um, it has been developed mainly as a binary classifier, yes, no, uh, plus, minus, zeros, ones, but you can use this binary classifier in order to make a multi class classifier. Uh, for your homework that we can talk later, you have to use the SPM function. If you use MATLAB, it's already a built in function. But you can see that I don't know about OpenCV, it's high probability we have it as a uh, binary classifier. But what you need to do, you have to develop the multi classifier from this binary classifier. Or if you can find a code for well, multi class SVM, you can directly uh, uh, use it. Now, in order to talk about SVM, I need to have an example. So I draw it here. So if I erase the board, I, I still can keep, keep that one. Assume. Assume we have this data. Okay. Similarly, 
Uh, the red line is the closest to the negative class, but it doesn't cross over there. So we have no uh, misclassification. And we understand the green line is the line which has the maximum distance from our um, we, we can call these two lines as boundary conditions because they are the, the limits, right? We cannot, we cannot go further uh, on the bottom of this line or below of this line, otherwise we cause some misclassification. So it has a maximum distance from our uh, boundary condition, conditions that we have defined. It satisfies the least commitment condition. Okay? Now, the whole story is uh, what is the equation of this, this uh, middle line? If I know the equation of this middle line, then everything is very good. I can classify, I can draw the line and say that um, what is the plus and what is the minus for the any input that we have. One thing that we have to note is this. We try to find the equation of, uh, we understand this is 2D, right? So we draw a line, but in general, if, country, if we are not 2D, uh, we won't have a line. What do we have? Hyperplane. We try to find the equation of the hyperplane in which now, do you know if I have the line or if I have the hyperplane, how can it help me in order to make the classification? We never talked about it because we assume everyone knows. But do you know what is the what is the task of this line or hyperplane? Well if it, if the values are like bigger than that. If I give an input, I project it on this line. And based on the value that I get, I decide whether I am positive or I'm negative. So this is a special equation. You put your x values, your data, and what you get as an output will tells you you are in plus or you are in negative. Okay? So uh, in which uh, we try to find the equation of the hyperplane, which if we project a point. This can be like the quarry point. This can be the input onto it. Uh, it results. It results into a value telling us which class the point belongs. Do you know what is the term that we use if, if I have the output of this uh, line, the output of this equation that we've been writing in a few minutes? Uh, I give a point, it gives me a value which tells me if I have to go to positive or negative. What is this task is called? I give it to a function, the function gives me a value. And this, this task that I'm mentioning. Looking at this 
value, it tells you if I'm positive or negative. What is this task called? It's called labeling. So we give a label. So the output is a label. So we, do, we drive a function which is a label. Believe me, the general for for a hyper plane is this. transpose x plus d, where w and b are the um, parameters of the plane. If we said we are in 2D, this hyperplane will become a line. line. What is the equation of the line? Why is it equal to x plus b? Why I don't write it in here? Because it caused some misunderstanding. Uh, I don't want to orange. Look, I write something, but I, I erase it. And we know that for a line, it is y is equal to mx plus b. But there is a big difference between this y and this y. What are the differences? What is the difference? No, no, in, in 2D, it's a number, it's also a number. What is the difference? Uh, it's, it's 
it's not very impossible. Uh, it means we are not positive or negative. So what we are? Zero. Cool. I found one equation. I found one equation. If another question. Now uh, we have two, two other boundary conditions, right? This is the uh, plus and this is the minus. This is the far most that I can go before I cross over. So I consider this one to be plus one and this one to be minus one. So I need to to the question. Uh, similarly, we can say the equation for the blue and the red lines are The vector 
will be perpendicular to both lines that we have, both lines that we have, we understand that they are parallel, both parallel lines. Why are parallel? I will do a 
numerical example with very small, like two or three samples, and we will see how the support vector works. But in reality, we have big data, much, much bigger than the two or three data, so that'll be right there. And uh, the algorithms are already available, which you can use, you can implement SVM in order to get the results. So the question is that how we can find the W and B, because if I know the W and B, I know the, the line. If I know the line, then it means I have the equation, I can just plug in any input that you give me, and according to the values, I can assign which class I belongs to. So what I want to do, I want to do uh, an example. Before that, uh, do you have any question? You see, it's pretty simple. It's one of those uh, methods that we use algebra. We don't use probability in here. Um, algebra is cool. You are in, you are out. We don't say that uh, with high probability you are in. Suppose we have to for a line straight by. Well, yeah. what happens is we can draw lots of lines. So we can have. Can, or we can divide our data into two big categories and then each of the categories is a subcategory. If you cannot draw a line, what will happen? Imagine I have only two classes like this, uh, like this. I mean, th th this is a valid point. Well, let, let me ask. What will happen here? Definitely, you cannot draw a line. What will happen? There are two solutions. One solution, which is very popular, is this. I will try to transfer this one to another domain by another domain. I don't tell you that go to frequency domain. Do a transformation, go somewhere else, and do all this operation. Actually, if you look at the main uh, driving of this one, we are not writing X, we are writing something called Firefix. It means that we are transforming into another uh, coordinate which you can draw the lines. Imagine you cannot find this Firefix. Or you insist to stick with this one and you want to draw the line. And you know that you cannot draw the line. What will happen now? Yes, you can draw a line, but you accept that you have this classification. <laughs> Well, then it's up to you how to define, or uh, there are also optimization which is going behind the algorithm and they, they find a line. So they try to find a line which maximum number of positives are on the right and maximum number of negatives are on the left. But as we are doing the crossovering, we, we are doing a very nice example here, but as we have crossovering, we can do the misclassification. Using this transform, this transformation is not necessarily guaranteed that you have no misclassification. Yet you can have a misclassification because you don't know what's happening there. Sometimes you cannot find these good files which can really separate them so you can draw the lines. Also, remember, we are, we are drawing the lines based on all the data that we have. And this is some sample of the big data that we have in our hand, right? So maybe there exists some other data which are plus and they are really much into the negative parts. That's why that you can use an SVM and you can see your, your result is let's say 98 or, or I don't know whatever the other numbers are. So it doesn't mean that multi-class SVM or binary class SVM you use it and you get different hundred percentage of recognition. But it still is, is the best. So as I mentioned, uh, I don't write it here, but usually we, what we do, we are transforming from one domain to another domain in order to have a better separation. Okay, then. Now, let's do one numerical uh, example. Um, this is a good example because uh, it's numerical, it can be an exam. So, suppose we have two features, x1 and x2.
design then um, not design let's say we want to find the best hyperplane that is divide the these two classes. So we want to find we want to find the hyperplane, in other words, find an equation of the line or plane, uh, which if I draw it, I can use it in order to find out which of the classes are positive, which one is are, are negative. It's easy to see that the vector W will be this, which is perpendicular to the line which are passing through 1 and 1 and 2 and 3. So this would be my, my W. How can I find the W? The I'm sorry, but what, what are the two classes here? Right? I mean, ah, we, we have two classes, I'm telling you. We have two classes and there are the features of x, the, the, the classes of x1 and x2. And we have these three data. We have two classes or two features? Two classes, classes x1 and class x2. Okay. Two classes which have the features x1 and features x2. So, and we are showing them as a pair of two zeros, one one, and two three. And now we want to use SCM in order to divide them into two classes. Then I understand that uh, one one is one class, and two, the point two three is. I have one one, two zero, two three, and there are two classes. Uh, two zero is a point two one. So we have three data and which these data have two features, that's why that I can show them with a um, uh, pair. If it has three features, I can show it with the uh, uh, triples. And the question is that, tell me a line which I can, can use in order to say that, huh, these are one class, the other one's another class. So we don't know classes, but we want to divide them into classes? Yes, so we want to find a vector which actually give us this maximum distance. And we can see that the maximum distance can easily happen when we have it between 1 and 2 and 3. And the reason is that well, x1 is, is changing, x2 is changing, and we have uh, better instrumentation. Sorry? Can we find W? We find the W. The question is not find the W. The vector, in order to find it, we do this. We subtract the two, the two points that we have. But two vectors that we have. And what we get is uh, one and two. So the vector W will be, I multiply by a constant, let's say A, and two A. Okay? Because this is this is a vector. This is a vector. Now, this is let's say the line that we have for minus one. This is the line that we have it for one. So let's consider the point one and one. So it will be the dot product of what I have with the 1 and 1, so it will be a plus 2a plus b is equal to minus 1. I do the same thing for this point, so it will be 2a plus 6a plus b is equal to 1. This is for the point one and one. This is for the point two and three. 
So if I know what is A, if I know what is B, it means that I have the W, I have the P, I have the equation. So what I do is this. Here I have 3A plus B is equal to minus 1. Here I have 8A plus B is equal to 1. Two equations, two unknowns. You can, you can solve to find the values of A's and B's. This one. P is 1 minus 8A, put it back in here, calculate the value of A, calculate the value of B. Can you please calculate it? So the y would be Now I have to write it as this one, right? How many features do I have? So this is the hyperplane that can use for classification by using the software vector machine. But we don't have uh, two features in the reality and we don't have only two classes. So what we want to do is this. We want to do the next homework. So you have to continue like that. 
and what is left is the class one and class two and so on. Is it a possible thing to have class one in here? No. What can happen if I have? It's a misclassification. So if this is a correct classification, there is no way to have class one here. If we have a class one, it means it's a misclassification, so we have to see which class it goes to. Now, you have to do it. Uh, you remember this equation? So, uh, we have the faces. What are our features? Now, in order to find the features, uh, this is something that we can understand who is doing the homework by on a himself or herself. You can use any feature that you like. Can you tell me that uh, what are the features that you can use? Pixels. Sorry? Okay. Pixels, you can use the whole, you can make it a vector and give it all in. This is one way. Very naive way, but this is a way. Naive in the sense that we have lots of common things in the background and so on. What else? Definitely you know one of them. What was the first feature extractor technique that we learned? PCA. PCA. You can use the PCA. All of them or some of them. What else? LCA. You can use IECA. And I say to tell you that which features are very important. You can just grab some bunch of those features and, and fit it into the system. So it's up to you to choose what are the features that you want to use. You can go on the internet and you can see that how people are extracting some other features. But we want to, to do this one. Okay? And you are using it on your computer, so we don't have any processing or, or time constraint. In other words, you can use the whole features of PCA as an input if you want to. So, this is our homework two, uh, homework three. Is it homework three? Yeah. Uh, which you will have, let's say, 30 days. One month in order to do it. Do you have any question? If you have no question, uh, before I dismiss the class, this is the end of the lecture for, for today, yes? I actually have a question when you did the Premier, for example. Yeah. Like, how do we, uh, we have, like, I assume that point one one and point two zero are in. If you build one in the same class. Yeah, the same same class. class. Or are we assuming that? And then my question was that how do we select the points that we calculate the W? Well, so you, have we to find, you, find you have to find the one which can give us, result us into the maximum experimentation. In other words, to get the maximum value for the uh, vector V. Isn't it? If they are too close, it's not good. But then do we have to like go over all the data points to find the Theoretically, yes, you have to. But practically, you can look and say no. In, in our case, it's very big, easy to see. OK, but we, if you have big data. Well, well if you have data. big data, you know that, as I said, there are lots of, lots of algorithms go behind the, the, SVM, the real SVM algorithm in order to do lots of optimization to pick up each points. And uh, in here, if this is an exam question, you will have points which you can look and say that which points you need to take. Otherwise you need to repeat this several times to find out what is the best. There is no point. If you can do it once, you can do it for 10 times. Okay? Um, now, for this classification there exist lots of other techniques. As I said, near network, trees, and so on. Uh, and as Eric said, can we also talk about probability? And the answer is yes, we can talk about probability also in order to do this type of uh, classification. Uh, but before we go and talk about the uh, probability based or statistic based uh, classification, we have to also talk about supervised and unsupervised way of learning. We will talk quickly about those ones in the next lecture, and then we will come, we will get back to the probability again, and we use probability in order to do the classification. Using the probability uh, needs, as you can remember, uh, needs more mathematics to be involved. Do you have any question? If you have no question, this is the end of the lecture for today.